How the heck did this get here so fast? All right, Jeff here. So um, I had uh, mentioned in my last video I was going to do another one, and then I ended up not doing it that day. And I anticipated doing another one real soon, um, but then an unexpected package came in today. Um, I'm sure, as everybody knows, during this whole uh, COVID-19 um, pandemic situation, um, mail has been going pretty slow. I had actually mailed some uh, stuff over to one of the, some VCLT over to somebody, and it's still been sitting for weeks. Um, hasn't moved. It's been weeks since the early part of June uh, or end of May. Anyway, um, but anyway, so I placed an order yet barely 10 days ago from Australia for um, eight records, eight records. Went ahead and bought a bunch because it saves on shipping. Um, they shipped them in two different packages. I didn't realize that. One set of packages came today. One of the set packages mm -hmm. came today. Um, it was sent from England. So I'm assuming they had somebody there that uh, drop shipped it from England. But still, from England to the US in less than 10 days. I was shocked. I wrote the guy and I was shocked. He was shocked too that um, that part of these had already come. So uh, we'll see how long it takes for the second batch. But what I um, picked up in a large bulk like that, and I'm late to the game because like I said, most people have already gotten these or showed these, but I went ahead and picked up all of the mortification vinyl that I did not have, which is not a whole lot. I mean, which is everything except I have Live Planetarium that came out. Uh, I picked that up last year on Black Friday. And I have the uh, Break the Curse that I think was it Rocks that put it out a couple years ago. So I have those. But, and I don't know why I decided at this point um, to catch up. Uh, it was kind of like a decision to go ahead and, well, you know, the new ones are coming out. I'm getting way behind. And, you know, it's kind of a little cheaper to go ahead and grab them all right from Australia and even though the shipping is high when you buy a bunch of albums and divide that out over the whole bunch of albums it ends up coming out still cheaper than some of the US sellers have to carry and sell for with their markup so I went ahead and picked it up so um, again I'm not gonna say a whole lot about these if you're into mortification you know about these these are all classic albums they've been out again for a little while um, mortification their first album it is on beautiful green vinyl. See if I can get it out of the barracks there. Nice. Um, this is what started it all. Pretty much, I mean, Break the Curse, when it first came out, was actually under the old name Light Force, even though it was a different band and different sound. Um, and actually, uh, you know, I reviewed the Light Force cassette way back in the day in my magazine that I did. And I actually suggest, I said, you know, this is such a radical departure, basically, from the light force sound they really should change their name I don't know if they read that or not I know Steve Rowe has read my magazine because I have back in the day when you couldn't just call people I have a cassette of him that he recorded and sent to me about one of my reviews because back in the day I wasn't big into the death metal thing and I kind of was critical of it and he wrote, wrote uh, sent me back an actual audio recording of basically defending why they do what they do um, First out, Mortification. And like I said, that's the follow-up to their cassette. If you got Break the Curse on vinyl, then you've got their actual first release. And that's, it's really good. And you know, some of it crosses over there. Um, what most people call the high water mark, because everybody loved that specific thrash sound that they had here on this one, on uh, Scrolls of the Megaloth. You know, it's not even a title on there. Um, this one is on what they, what they call it? Ochre, Ogre, Ochre? That's kind of a clear, semi-transparent, yellowish, weird color. Um, anyway, it is a great album. Uh, I remember when it came out. It was, it's a good departure from the first album as far as style. It's it's definitely more concise. Great album. Still love it to this day. Then we got post momentary affliction, um, and like I said, this is the one I guess I was so wanting to buy when it came out months ago. Um, and I just, like I said, I didn't jump on it. I believe this one's just on black. 
Now, what they did with this and scrolls, I'm sure, again, I'm not telling you anything new if you're a fan, they couldn't fit all the record on either one of those. So they came back and released a 10 inch uh, that has, it's got the scrolls part here, it's got the post momentary, and it's got the two songs. There's one really long song on, on the albums that were excluded from the album and put on here. This is a really neat idea. This I love this idea. I like 10 inches, they're cute. Um, so it's got each side has one track that's missing from the other two albums. Great idea. But it also has two more tracks. from One's from a compilation, uh, and one of them is, yeah, both of them are from compilations. One's from a Five Years Nuclear Blast compilation, one's from a thing, one called Godspeed. So you got two songs here that weren't even released on the record, so it's really cool. They beef it up with the little four four tracks there. That was really neat. So glad to have that. And then the last one here is Realm of the Skeletor. This is their more, most recent album. Um, so I guess they had this, you know, over in the English thing. It's on Black Vinyl also. So the ones I'm waiting for, for are Triumph of Mercy and the Primitive Rhythm Machine, I guess, is one that it had already been out, but it's coming, I guess, from them also. Um, Envision Evangeline. And that third one. Anyway, those three plus the fourth missing one should be coming soon. So that prompted me to do this one today. Um, so let's continue on in the vein of Christian music real briefly. Okay, first I'm gonna first I'm gonna stray into let's let's go with just mainstream music. Hellbender. Um I mentioned this in the last video. I have been listening to this uh, more and more and I dig it. I'm just gonna suggest it again. It's still on my desk, that's why. It's on my desk, I grab it, and I'm gonna play it. Um, I also got this in yesterday. Mama's Boy's official bootleg album, 1980, first time on CD, is what it's labeled as. Um, Mama's Boy's the Irish trio, you know, they came up in the 80s and did, uh, they did a cover of Mama We're All Crazy Now and some other things. I love all their stuff. I already had a digital copy of this. From my understanding, I guess this was released on album and cassette, but never on CD. Well, there's a company overseas called Diamond Rocks, and they've been putting out a lot of stuff like this. And so this just came out. I ordered it, pre-ordered it, and it came out. It's got uh, all of the songs from that album, which I think there was there might have been one or so missing. And then it's got two tracks, High Energy Weekend and Hitchhike, which is from a rare 7-inch bonus uh, it's bonus tracks from a rare seven inch single that was released like the year after so you read the story in here It's got a neat story. Um, the drummer passed away, you know in 94 of leukemia um, It tells the struggle of, of all the early years um, And the touring and all that and the sickness and fighting with that uh, But they basically went in and recorded this in hours a few hours and then when they recorded their first album plug it in they, they had like a week and then the next album, they, it's a little story of, of how they uh, went from album to album, which is really cool. Um, this came in from uh, Rock's Records the other day, The Warning, Trilogy of Damnation. If you're not familiar with The Warning, The Warning is a band that put out some cassettes back in 87 and 88, I think it's the years, 87 and 88. And back in the day when everybody in the field was just putting out demo type cassettes and there they were really raw it's a drum machine it's a guy playing guitar it sounds like it's recorded on a two track really muddy four track probably um singer is just screaming stuff out kind of punkish you can understand what he's saying though it's not that kind of screaming and he's just screaming stuff out and it's very 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 in your face religious stuff as far as uh, abortion is murder and just all kinds of just it's really punkish in your face hard stuff now they released three cassettes back in the day repent or die 1986 i was wrong yeah he said cut the uh a virgin in the midst of whores 1986 and cut the crap 1987 uh, i had all of these cassettes back in the day loved them the guitar player so your singer his name is David, but he goes by Burrito. So the singer's Burrito is his name. Um, the guitar player, it's really just the two guys. I am i don't even know if there's even... I didn't look to see if there's any bass. Tracy G. You may be familiar with Tracy G. He has went on to do a lot of things with a lot of different people, including Ronnie James Dio. He was in the Dio band for a while. Um, I know he's got a project coming up real soon with another big-name person 
big name classic person in the Christian market, but I'm not going to say anything because I'm not sure if I should be able to. But the singer told me about it. Anyway, Tracy G from Dio. This is where he w did some stuff in the in the Christian realm back in the day. I love this stuff. This is the beginning. It's got a second CD in here because I purchased one of the early, I mean, one of the uh, double sets. It's got ma ma more majority live. It's a different band that Burrito was in. It's a live thing. It was uh, in there before the warning. And uh, David told me that it was recorded by Tracy G. So it's in here as a bonus disc for the uh, two disc edition. This is the beginning. There's supposedly some more stuff coming, not from the warning, but after the warning, they went on to do Eight Ball Colos, or however you pronounce that. Um, I have the one album they put out, and supposedly they're, they're going to reissue that and some other stuff by them and a new album. So uh, looking forward to that. I don't know who's going to be on the new album, but hey, I picked up Godman a couple weeks ago. It's new stuff. Um, these guys have done other material. I'm not going to totally wrong names. Um, but uh, Jonathan Johnson and Tiago James D. Souza. Um, I believe he's also the uh, Perpetual Paranoia. He's Anyway, these guys, are, it's kind of like guys from other bands got together and put this out. Um, modern metal. Uh, to me, it feels a little noisy, but but it seems like the stuff I've heard with this guitarist tends to be a little noisy. But that's kind of the modern sound, I guess. Um, it's just it's 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 more modern metal. Check it out. Uh, you, you can find tracks online for that. Worth mentioning just briefly is I finally and this is a year old. Um, I picked up Blood Goods uh, reissue of their album Detonation. This is the special edition. It's got a couple live tracks. Um, I forget why. I just grabbed this because I, I love Blood Good. I wanted to have this. The only edition that I had before was this one that was released by uh, Intense Millennium. This is, uh, and they did redid the cover. It's got the original cover inside. Now, at first, usually when I do this, I'll buy the new edition and sell the old edition. But in this case, I can't really sell the old edition. The three bonus tracks on here are different than they are on there. So it's not the same release. And this particular edition is a double disc set, and the second disc is a live concert. And it's really bootleggy, but it's a double disc. I'm not going to get rid of it. Um, so I'm going to keep this. Uh, you know, maybe compare their production one day. Now I have the the same thing with the first album. Again, they redid the cover. That's the original, and again, it is a double disc with another live concert in there there is an issue with this that has been reissued and i probably will pick it up just to hear the new uh i believe these are i forget who remastered them was it rob caldwell or david's no nope, david Safira for this one anyway i'll probably pick it up one day when i get a, like a black friday sale or fourth of july sale coming up something get some money knocked off and buy a bunch of stuff anyway that's all i got for now um I was just thrilled, excited. Got a bunch of mortification in the mail today. Can't believe it came so soon. Anyway, I'll be back. Thanks for watching. Rock on.